Looking at the features of the Accordo 120, you've got your alloy wheels, color coded handles. This is the access for your cassette toilet. Got your gray water drain, gas bottle locker. So where we fill up our water, fresh water, fresh water drain. It's pre-fitted with the uh, fixing point for the bike rack. Reverse camera. This is the locker for your 240 volt that we went through earlier on. Awning light. Fridge vents. And then habitation door. To fill up our fresh water, what we need to do firstly is to lift the flap up. Like so. And then what we can do is get a hose pipe. The hose pipe clips into here. Then turn on our fresh water. Fresh water will fill up. Please ensure that this tap here is in the closed position. So you'll notice that by the uh, little eyelet at the top is lined up. So again, this enables you to put a lock on if you wanted to. And then uh, on this one, when we're winterizing, please always remember to drain it down. We do that by rotating this little knob uh, to the right. That'll then open the valve, and then again, the fresh water will come out of here. We also must ensure that our gray waste, so this is our um, gray water, so this is all of your waste water from your shower, your sink, all runs into here. Please ensure that that is also closed. Now, it also tells you on the top just there. And again, just rotate it to open. And again, it'll tell you when it's open, but it'll also help to drain the, the gray water. So it, from inside on the control panel, it will notify you that this is this requires to be emptied and it's full. However, um, just turn it and that will that will drain it. When we drain it, drain it into a, um, there'll be an emptying point when you're on site um, or a manhole uh, is the other area that you could empty it. Please remember when filling up with water, always use a food grid hose pipe. Again, for all, it does latch into here. Always keep an eye on it. And again, when we're filling up, please check on the control panel and that will give the progress. It will overflow once it's full, but sometimes that can cause to siphon. If so desired, some people do put aqua tabs in, which helps to uh, keep the tank clean or to purify the water. Um, but really, as long as these are food grade, food grade hose, um, everything will be fine. The hookup cable is located in the rear box on the um, passenger side. It is locked. So first we need to unlock it. The lead slots through here where there's a little uh, recess for it. And then again, the way in which we connect this, when we're removing it, please pull the lid towards you. That will then allow it to slide out. And then when we're putting it back in, keep it lifted up and then this top then latches over to make it secure. And then when we're finished, close this and then lock. That just means nobody can get in to unplug you and it's secure. Okay, so, because that toilet is just located in this flap. To release, press the right hand button and the left, the left obviously is lockable as well. To remove this, the cassette, lift up the handle, pull towards you. And then again, there is a handle located just on the top, which allows us to pull it out. I have put chemicals into it. Unscrew the flap, or the lid, should I say. And you notice this little measure. When we're filling it up, don't go to the seal. Please always put your chemicals into here. Fill it up to the top mark. You can either use green or blue chemicals. Um, we recommend green. Green is a bit more environmentally friendly and you can use it at every site. Blue is a stronger chemical, but you can only use it in the UK. So again, once we've put the chemical into there, empty it in, screw the top back on. Again, we empty through this pipe as well. So um, you can either, if you've got to take it to the Elson point, 
We've got a little handle. It's also on wheels, so it works very, very easily. Again, handle just pushes back down. Handle just relocates behind these two lugs here and here. Then just allows us to pull it up, lift it up, and then again, insert it back in. Push it in. When it clips in, the handle's down. That's locked into place. So one of the first things we're going to do once we actually pull up on the site is to turn the gas bottle on. The way in which we do that, if you haven't got your gas bottle uh, plugged in, or should say the lead screwed in, it's a hand tightened lead, the way in which we tighten it will be opposite thread, so we screw it towards ourselves, and then again once it gets tight, that's band position, obviously it's connected to the regulator already for you, and again we'll be able to then turn the gas on. Secondly, also obviously what we should have done first is to ensure that the, the gas bottle is located correctly. So what you'll see is it's a ring, the gas bottle sits into the ring, and then again, please ensure using the strap that it is tight. It will take two six kilogram gas bottles. Once we step into the motorhome, the first thing we're gonna to want to do is to turn a power on. To the button to the left, just your, um, your high level lights, which run around the rear lounge. Give a really nice feel. So turn that button off. Next thing, this tells us our battery levels. So this is telling us that our habitation battery is full. All bars are illuminated. And this will tell us our um, fresh water. So it's telling us our fresh water is uh is is empty so again we'll fill that up and again just down to the right that's our water pump so press that that will then activate the the pump so that button there awning light and lights just below we have our wheel heating control panel so the top one is for your water Bottom one is for your heating. So to activate that, press it. That's telling it that the flame is now ignited, well lit. That tells the heating system that we want activated on gas. We press it again, it will then flick to about one bar, then two bars, and then two bars with gas. So two bars is, well one bar is working on one bar of electric, two bars, two bars of electric, and then two bars and gas means that we're working it on gas and electric. The way in which you select that is just by using the push button. It won't select electric at the moment because I haven't got us plugged in. And then again, for your hot water, sorry for heating, should I say, hot water and heating. For heating, press it once, you'll see that's illuminated. That just tells the system that we want to power it on gas. Press it again, and that turns it off. The little plus and minus button is the uh, the power of the fan. So you may initially want to turn it right up, and that will give it um, quite a, a powerful surge of, of, of heating. It will take probably, certainly on, uh, on electric, it could take about 20 minutes to warm up. Uh, the best way to function the heating system on any heating system is to run it as gas and electric initially. Get at the temperature and then uh, just pop it back onto electric and that'll help to maintain. Same for hot water, gas and electric to start and then knock it back onto electric. If you're not on a site, obviously it would just be working off gas. On gas, expect it to take around about five to 10 minutes to heat up. And then again, your hot water, again, five to 10 minutes on gas. It's a much more powerful way of heating, heating this system. After we've turned the control panel on, we may then want to turn the fridge on. So the fridge works on three sources. So just over here, we've got our selector knob. So if we turn it in the moment, you'll notice on the plug, you've got zero, so that's off when it's at, at vertical. You turn it one, turn it to the right, you've got 240 volt. When you turn it onto 240 volt, just simply turn it to there, leave it. 12 volts of the engine battery, that's, that basically won't work on 12 volt until the engine is started. So if you're traveling anywhere, 
cool it down first on either 240 volt or gas and then when you unplug or turn your gas off remember to turn it on to 12 volt and whilst you're driving the fridge will get well it won't cool but it will maintain temperature through 12 volt and then gas send down to the bottom and then on the right hand side here again we've got our temperature knob so that works for both uh, gas electric and 12 volt so completely to the uh, turned up to that point there that's maximum so that's the coldest it will be and as we turn it gradually towards the right that'll be warmer so we set it around there to work it on gas press this button in press the the uh, the silver button in also you hear a ticking once you hear a tick the ticking stop and again over here the little um, gauge once that little uh, red line reaches into the into the green that tells us that it's now working on gas so you can also hear it burning in the background but that's a good indication that it's working the oven so again works off uh, of, of gas only so the oven itself you've got your igniter igniter here the igniter works for both the oven and also your hob so again all we do is press turn whilst we turn press the igniter that will turn on the hob and for the oven or the grill so to turn the oven on turn to the left then press the igniter you can see that's illuminated and then just depress turn it to off for the grill again press it press the knob in turn it to the right to the grill and then press the igniter and then you'll notice it illuminates or it should I say ignites depress once it's uh, after about three seconds once the flame has had time to warm up the thermocouple and then again to turn off just turn to the left in the center and that will turn it off on an evening we've got a choice of either sleeping with two singles or a large double bed for two singles just simply remove the backrests and there will give you the single storage of the backrest can be um, put up towards the front area, out of the way, um, or on the floor. The double bed option, what we need to do is first slide out the slats, which are located just here. Slide them right out. So the bedroom area looks like so. Then what we're going to do is utilize the backrest. Now what the way in which I like to make the bed, it, it does take a little bit longer, but if you spin the cushions over, which I'll demonstrate in a second, uh, you get a much flatter bed, much more comfortable. So the bed begins to start to take shape. What I do with this cushion here, you'll notice it's got a, a rolled edge. When we swivel it, we put the rolled edge over at the far end, just like we've done over here. That'll mean you get a, a very nice flat bed which is demonstrated in the next shot. There's your final bed makeup. So again, got a big, huge, large double bed. Windows, all of the uh, windows have blind and fly screen. So the inner one is your fly screen. Just pull it down, clips in at the bottom. Your blind, you can put into a couple of different locations and then it clips in. So there's our blinds down. Put them back up, pull it towards you, and then ease it up. Our windows, you've got the window catches. Open the window, and then push out each side. You'll see you've got a, a, a knob which will allow you to then adjust the window and tension it in a particular position that you want. If during the evening you want it on an um, uh, airing, you've got a second stage catch that you can put into, which will allow a little bit of, of, of circulation of air. Roof lights work in a very similar position, or similar to the windows. We've got our blind fly screen. And then to put the roof light up, press the little button in, pull the handle towards you, and then you've got a couple of different positions so that's obviously fully up and then you can choose to put it into lower positions 
just by putting into the actual uh, groove that you can see just there. When driving, please ensure that the roof light is locked down. Make sure the handle is actually locked into location. And again, please also ensure that your windows are locked on all catches. That goes again for the front roof light. The front roof light is a wind up and wind down roof light. Works in this very similar position. Please ensure that we don't travel with it in the up position. The front roof light is slightly different whereby your blind comes and fly screen come from the bottom. So blind all the way up and then fly screen again, pull it up again. Great for letting in drafts and a, a, a fresh bit of fresh air. It also helps to circulate things. TV aerial is located in the wardrobe. Very easy to use. Again, on here, you'll notice you've got a little knob. You can turn the uh, frequency up or down, depending upon uh, whether you're receiving a signal. Again, this is directional aerial. So you'll notice you've got a, um, a a nut on there and you can push the aerial up or down. Once you've got it into location, you can then lock it into place. Just opposite your oven and your fridge, you've got just below your wardrobe area, which is located here, you have a little silver button with a flap. Pull that down. What that shows us is our mains consumer unit. So in here we have all of our trips. So water heater, fridge, charger, uh, etc, etc. So that's it. To test if you've got 240 volt coming in, press that button down. That will trip. That let us know that we've got 240 volt coming into the motorhome. All of our 12 volt fuses are located here. So if we have any problems with uh, no power getting to any anything in particular, so no lights, um, no 12 volt coming through, no water pump, then this would be the area to check. And again, during the winter, this has also got the, uh, the tank heaters in. So at the moment they're off, um, whilst we're using them in the, uh, in the winter, flick that down and that will turn on your tank heater. In the winter months, we're gonna to want to drain the water. It's also a good idea to keep it uh, stored with fresh water in. To drain your hot water, just under here, you can see that's a yellow lever. Can't see it very well. So the yellow lever is pointing at 90 degrees or, or vertical. Uh, all we need to do is turn that to the left, that will drain the hot water tank. So that's located in the compartment just beneath the oven. The other thing that we want to do as well once, uh, when we're winterizing is, as I showed you earlier on, you want to empty the fresh water with the blue tap and also empty the, the grey water. Don't keep it stored. With the pump site turned off, what we want to do is store all of, the, all of our taps in the up position. So again, we do the same in the bathroom and that'll just ensure that there's no water that can uh, freeze and damage the cartridge or damage the tap. Again, always leave it in the upright position. And then again, don't put them down until you're gonna use it again. So put it down and then start to fill up the water and then turn our water pump on as I showed earlier. Front screen, you've got Remus blinds. Again, you've got this on the side. Depress the two little uh, buttons in, push them towards one another. That will then free it. Again, because this has got a, um, a rain sensor on, you notice the cut out there. And then again, do the same with the opposite side and they magnetize together. So put it back, push it in, push that down and that clicks in. Passenger side, or sort of say the, uh, the window on the driver and passenger side. Just glides along and again, magnetizes. You have that. Repeat that on both sides and then to put it back again, it just slides and again, just be careful and then it just clips back in. 
in terms of the cab, what we have is the radio, obviously you've got your power button, tune it, air conditioning button, again this is your uh, heater control from cool to hot, fan speed, and again this is how they want to recirculate or where I want the air to go. Six speed gearbox, the way in which we select reverse, lift up the, um, the, the little knob and then that will allow you then to select reverse. Hazard, center locking, so that will lock both cab doors. And again, that's for your heated uh, mirrors. On the steering wheel, you do have volume control and also telephone. Just over here on the right hand side, you've got two things. One is just down here. This is access to your fuse box. So again, if anything does go off, that's where your fuses are located. And then on here, you've got your mode. So again, that will allow you to select um, date, time, etc. Just shown on there. And on the stalks, you've got your cruise control located here, uh, indicators and lights and wipers.